Hello everybody! Watch this video to find out how to install and configure TrueNAS Core Operating System and how to turn an ordinary computer into a NAS storage with TrueNAS Operating System. TrueNAS Core, previously known as FreeNAS, is a free open-source operating system for data storage applications, which enables you to create your own data server and do it without spending a single dollar on software. With TrueNAS, you can turn an ordinary computer into a network-attached storage with the full functionality of a NAS device, a modern file system, ZFS, and various plugins. Most users seem to view ZFS file system as a favorite choice for NAS servers, because it is designed to ensure the best possible data integrity along with excellent performance and outstanding effectiveness. It offers real-time compression and deduplication, which can save your disk space considerably. In this video, we will explore TrueNAS installation process and basic configuration of the network storage device. Before installing this operating system, you need to know its minimum system requirements. For TrueNAS to run properly, the computer should have at least 8GB of system memory, and if you plan to use a virtual machine or additional plugins, it's recommended to have more than 8GB of RAM. Also, TrueNAS doesn't support dual boot, so you'll have to find a separate hard disk for this operating system. Before we begin the installation, you need to create a bootable drive from which the operating system will be installed. You can download an image containing the latest version of TrueNAS from the official website. The Download button will appear as soon as you sign in to the website. Scroll down and click Download now. Now, you need to find a USB drive and a utility for creating a bootable flash drive. I'll be using the well-known tool Rufus. It's all very easy. Select the USB drive, give the path to the image file, and click this button to start the process. After the bootable drive is created, plug into the computer where you'd like to install TrueNAS and boot from the USB drive. To select this option, press F12 or F2 depending on the motherboard model. Select the USB drive from the list and press Enter. Press Enter again to select the first item on the list, the installer. In the next window, select the first option, Install, Upgrade, and then press Enter. If your computer has less than 8GB of system memory, you will see this warning. In the next window, select the drive where to install TrueNAS. You can identify the required drive by its size as other drives will have different names. Use the arrow keys to select the required drive and press space to select it. Then press Enter to confirm a choice. After that, you will see a warning that all data will be erased from this drive. Select Yes and press Enter to confirm your choice. Finally, you need to type and confirm the password for your root or administrator's account, which you are going to use to access the TrueNAS controls. TrueNAS can boot in either mode, BIOS or UFI. I choose BIOS as this mode works with almost every motherboard. Before you choose UFI, you need to make sure that your motherboard supports it. As you make this choice, the installation of the operating system begins and it is going to take a few minutes. When it's over, you'll see a notification saying it's time to restart and remove the installation media. Choose OK and then remove the bootable drive. After the operating system boots, you will see the setup console and the server's IP address below. When the server boots for the first time, there is no need to configure it as the operating system will enable a default configuration for active network interfaces with the help of DHCP. If you want to set a specific IP address for the server, this can be done with this menu. Choose the first option, Configure Network Interfaces, then type the number of the network interface you'd like to change. When asked if you want to remove the current settings for this interface, type N for No, and when suggested to configure interface for DHCP, type N again. When you are asked if you want to change IP version for configuration, type Y for Yes. Type the name of your network adapter, IP address, and subnetwork mask. Say no to IPv6 configuration. Now that we are finished with the network configuration, you can see that the service IP address has changed. This is where you can set up a wireless connection, reset root password or reset the current configuration to defaults. To connect to the server, open a browser or another computer belonging to this network and enter the IP address for the TrueNAS server. 
If only zeros are displayed instead of the IP address, check if the network cable is connected to the server. And make sure that it appears on the list of connected devices in the DHCP network of the router. To access the controls menu, type the username, root, and the password which you have given when installing TrueNAS. When you log in, you'll be able to access the TrueNAS web interface and manage the storage, access permissions, view the system status, and so on. Hello, friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you will be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. In this operating system, there is no wizard to give you some useful hints and help you create your free storage pool. So let's find out how to do that. In the left side panel, click on the Storage tab and choose Pools. Then click Add and Create Pool. Above, give the name of the pool and select the disks it is going to include. Have a look at the button called Add VDiv. As you can see, it doesn't add one more virtual device but lets you add a supporting device for it. When the disks are selected, click on the arrow to add the disks to the list of storage devices. Select the disks again. The default array type is array Z. To select a different one, click on it. The ZFS pool structure is rather simple. It consists of the virtual device VDEV, which is built with the disks. Every virtual device can be a RAID Z array with striping, mirroring, or a single disk. In the drop down list, you can find such options as stripe, mirror, RAID Z, Z2, and Z3, depending on the number of connected disks. Select the preferred RAID type and click Create. In the pop-up window warning you that all data will be erased, check the box to confirm your decision and click Create Pool. It starts disk formatting and building the array. Now the pool is created. Here you can see its status, name, size and other properties. By clicking on the three dots button, you can access the settings menu for this pool. The only step left to take is to configure access to this disk array. Now let's add a user. Click on the Accounts tab, Users, Add. Give the user name, password, and type the password again to confirm it. Check the box for Microsoft account and click Submit. Now that the user is added, let's configure network access to this directory. I will show you how to configure network access with the example of SMB protocol. Open the Storage tab, Pools, click on the three dots button next to your array and select Add Dataset. In the options, type the name and leave all other settings at their default values, then click Submit. Now you can see a new dataset in your pool. To configure access, let's create another dataset in the one we have created previously. Click on the three dots button here, add dataset, type the name, and click Submit. Now let's set the permissions. Click on the three dots button, open Edit Permissions, select Owner as the new user. Select the group and then check the boxes for Apply User and Apply Group. Check the necessary permissions and click Save. Now you need to enable a special service to access the storage from a Windows computer. Open the Sharing tab Windows Shares SMB. Click Add. Select your dataset from the list and click Submit. And then hit Enable service in the window that appears. In the new window, choose Configure Now. 
The next window suggests creating an ACL access control list. So I'll choose one from the presets, select a preset ACL and select restricted from the list. Then click continue. You will see new settings on the right. Scroll down and click save below. Now SMB setup for this directory is over. Let's get to your Windows computer, open the Explorer and add a network drive. Computer, map network drive, Type the service IP address and check the box to connect using different credentials. If you don't do that, the computer will connect using credentials of its main user and click Finish. The network drive is connected, so you can create a directory there and write some data to the drive. Summing up, TrueNAS is quite an interesting solution in terms of organizing your own network storage without paying too much. If you create a system like that on the basis of your old computer, you'll get a network-attached storage with a new file system, ZFS and a bunch of NAS features. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck! While you're watching this video, civilians in Ukraine are dying from attacks and bombardments on the Russian Federation. Putin's insane regime has attacked a peaceful country in the very heart of Europe. Support the Ukrainian army by making a contribution to the fund Come Back Alive. Use the QR code or the link below the video to transfer any amount of money that will boost Ukrainian resistance and help it counter Russia's dishonorable invasion.